Okay, so we are ready to, to begin with our first keynote of the day, right in time. So welcome everybody again to this 12th edition of the International Micro Air Vehicle Conference, IMAP 2021. It is my pleasure to introduce our first keynote speaker of the day, Rear Admiral Leopoldo Jesus Diaz Gonzalez Solorzano, Head of the Research and Technological Development Unit of the Mexican Navy. Admiral Gonzalez Solorzano graduated as a Naval Science Engineer from the Heroica Escuela Naval Militar of the Mexican Navy. He has held several appointments in the Mexican Navy, such as Patrol Commander, Deputy, and later Area Head of the Deputy General Management Office of Communication and Informatics, Inspector of the Naval Command of the Third Naval Zone, and Permanent, permanent Alternate Representative of Mexico to the International Maritime Organization, a specialized agency of the United Nations with headquarters in London, United Kingdom. In 2016, he was promoted to Rear Admiral of the Mexican Navy. He has also received several distinctions throughout his career. He was awarded the Naval Merit of First Class due to his high performance during his studies at the Heroica Escuela Naval Militar and awarded the Argentine Navy Prize for his high performance in military skills during these studies. He received an honorary mention for his high performance during a course given by the International Hydrographic Organization. To date, he is the head of the Research and Technological Development Unit of the Mexican Navy. So without further delay, please Admiral, the floor is yours, you have from 45 to 50 minutes for your presentation. Uh, to the public, please, you can uh, send your questions uh, via the chat. I will read them to the, to the speaker. You can send them to me um, and then I will read them. Uh, so thank you. Go, go ahead, please, Admir. Thank you, Dr. Carranza. Well, we'll be in our, our presentation. Uh, of the main area vehicles developed by the Mexican Navy. We got, uh, this is the content of the presentation. We want to talk about a little bit about the unit, our platform development, uh, our lessons learned, and future platforms. That will be the topics that we're going to cover today. Um, well, Mexican Navy was funded 2,200, 200 years ago. Uh, and since the uh, San Juan de Lua defense up to uh, the assistance of the population in, the, in distress has made its mark on the, in the country. And the Mexican Navy, uh, the mission is, uh, I want to say in Spanish, ejercer el poder marítimo nacional, proteger los intereses marítimos. Mantener el Estado de Derecho en zonas marítimas nacionales, costas, ríos, zonas lacustres, recintos portuarios, así como aplicar, aplicar la autoridad marítima nacional para garantizar la soberanía e impulsar el desarrollo del país en los términos que establece la Constitución Política de los Estados Unidos Mexicanos, las leyes que de ella deriven y los tratados internacionales. Well, our research unit was founded in 2001, so we are we have 20 years of service as a unit, well, as institute unit. Uh, we have our areas of knowledge. We have uh, developed radars. We have uh, systems of uh, control, uh, proportion of ships, uh, sonars. We also have uh, some uh, research in virtual environments. This is a video of the unit. I don't know if you...
Technological Research and Development Unit, UNINDETEC. The Secretariat of the Navy, within the scope of its attributions and with the vision of reducing foreign technological dependence and projecting itself as a cutting-edge institution, carries out scientific research activities through the Technological Research and Development Unit, UNINDETEC. Created on September 16, 2001, as the Institute of Research and Technological Development of the Mexican Navy, INIDETAM, it changes its name to Research and Technological Development Unit on July 16, 2020, based on the Secretarial Agreement 303 and in accordance with the decree in which various provisions of the internal regulations of the Secretariat of the Navy are reformed, added and repealed, published in the official journal of the Federation on December 8th of the same year. This unit has its headquarters in the Naval Facilities Complex of Anton Lizardo Veracruz and its mission is to carry out scientific research and technological development and innovation projects independently or in coordination with other institutions in order to support the operations of the Naval Forces, units and facilities. To fulfill its mission and vision, UNIDETEC has been assigned the following main functions. Research, development and integration, training and updating, link-up and partnership, replica production, technical support, and management and organization. UNIDETEC counts on highly qualified personnel with levels of study of doctorate, master's degree, specialties and bachelor's in engineering, with expertise in areas of knowledge such as computer science, modeling, simulation and virtual environments, electronics and control, mechatronics and instrumentation, aeronautics engineering, communications, signal processing, applied physics, underwater acoustics and optics, and cyberspace. In the process of innovation for research and generation of new technologies, development and integration are the most important functions of any scientific research center. However, this could not be performed properly without highly qualified human resources and the support of other centers specialized in the field. It is here that the substantive functions of training, updating, linkage and participation through which UNINDETEC coordinates with different national and foreign institutions to maintain and increase its capacities become important. That is why the Secretariat of the Navy has signed several research and development agreements with universities and centers of national and international prestige, such as the National Council of Science and Technology, CONACYT, the National Autonomous University of Mexico, the National Polytechnic Institute, the Autonomous University of Nuevo León, the Technological Institute of Monterrey, the National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics and Electronics, the National Technological of Mexico, Campus Veracruz, and the University of Veracruz, among others. It also has a close relationship with several national educational institutions so that its students can perform social service, internships or professional residencies, business semesters, and academic stays in the different areas or projects developed in this unit. The following projects are currently under development. The Secure Messaging System, Calypso. A cross-platform secure messaging software installable on mobile operating systems and desktop computers with servers under the exclusive control of CEMAR. Autonomous modular aquatic vehicle for shallow waters barimetry, Anguilla. Prototype of an unmanned surface vehicle with a maximum radio control range of 2 kilometers and 4-hour autonomy for bathymetric measurements of up to 80 meters with both single beam echo sounder designed by this unit and a remote control station. Radar Sinacan 200. The purpose of this project is to increase in 200 kilometers the range capabilities of the air surveillance radar at Sinacan, which means the bat guard in Nahuatl culture. This will allow the detection and tracking of aerial targets, linking the information obtained with the command and control system of the Mexican Navy and national or foreign agencies. The Institutional Navigation Radar for Surface Units, RINUS. 
project whose development was based on the knowledge acquired in the line of research of radar technology in order to acquire a prototype of institutional navigation radar for surface units of the Mexican Navy. Fixed Wing Flight Trainer Altair Designed for the Naval Aviation School, consists of a flight trainer for fixed-wing aircraft training and of a development and testing platform. Frequency Conversion System for Dredging Type Ships, SICOFRE. A system that allows the connection to a shoreline power supply, which includes a load center for alternating curving equipment in order to reduce the use of motor generators during stays in port and contributes to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Automation of the Reciprocal Aircraft Engine Test Platform, PLAMOA Aero. Control and monitoring system for reciprocal engines of Selena and mold type aircraft. It is integrated by an operation console and a video surveillance module with hard disks for backing up recordings. Electronic Navigation System B2.0 Cisne. This system allows information integration from navigation sensors, GPS, echo sounder, anemometer, gyroscopic, pit lock, and radar from surface units and displays it in electronic charts in S57 and BSB format with the aim of providing an A2 navigation. Projects developed with resources allocated to Canaseed funds. Secure radio communication Virgula, the Nahuatl symbol of the voice. This project consists of the design, construction, testing and commissioning of P-25 standard portable and semi-portable radio communication equipment and AES-256 high security encryption in order to achieve technological independence from abroad to meet the needs of the National Radio Communication Network. Vertical Takeoff and Landing on Manned Aerial System, SANDAF. The objective of this project is to design, build, integrate and test a vertical takeoff and landing on manned aerial system which is integrated with three aircraft, a satellite antenna and an earth control station. Link Network Analysis System, Sarvin PC. Software application to support naval intelligence for the construction and updating of link networks in authorized computing equipment. It provides analysts with tools for the generation of link networks based on information from the serving module of the application CPM, which is the System of Intelligence Products of the Mexican Navy. The implementation of the Laboratory for Electronic Radio Frequency Prototypes and Antennas. This project aims to design, build, test, and start up a laboratory for the development of prototypes of electronic cards that will strengthen the lines of research of communications, radars, unmanned aerial systems, and underwater systems and sensors. Its implementation will reduce prototype development time since it will have the necessary infrastructure, reducing the foreign technological dependence and increasing the scope of naval operations. Among the projects successfully completed, the following are the ones in replication phase. Mexican Navy Data Link System, CEDAM. It is a system with the ability to share a common operation and landscape and exchange tactical information from sea, air, and land operational units of interest in order to optimize the decision-making process. Digital Control and Propulsion Station Monitoring System, VCCOM. The DCCOM is a system that allows the control and monitoring of the propulsion train of the surface units of the Mexican Navy within safe operation parameters, as well as monitoring secondary functions. The Mexican Navy Command and Control System, SICAM. This is a system of information processing, monitoring and control of naval operations, visualizing the common operational panorama between the naval commands of the national territory in real time. Technological Transfer in Semar Inaoe. As part of the integration of new technological systems, we participate in the transfer of knowledge in the development of the optoelectronic firing control system Garfio 3.0, which is a project of the National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics and Electronics in Aoe. The project consists of a firing control system for Bofors 57 NK3 
guns installed on the oceanic patrol boats of the Mexican Navy. This will ultimately allow to carry out our own developments for this type of system. Uninditech representative projects developed with resources from the sectorial fund. The Maritime Zonar Surveillance System, CVSO, it is a system composed of a variable depth sonar and sonar voice to provide underwater detection capabilities to ocean patrol boats. This project attained important achievements in the areas of acoustics, signal processing, electronics and mechanics, which resulted in a maritime surveillance system composed of four types of sonar, portable sonar, passive sonoboy, active sonoboy, and variable depth sonar which are integrated into a portable container to provide underwater detection capabilities to ocean patrol type vessels. The Mexican Navy Intelligence Products System, CPM. It is a computer platform for the Mexican Navy Intelligence System, which aims to optimize the process of the naval intelligence cycle through information analysis tools interconnected to an institutional database. And finally, through mixed funds with the participation of the Secretariats of the Navy and the National Defense, CEMAR, SEDENA, and the National Council for Science and Technology, CANACID, the Air Surveillance Radar, CINACAN, was developed. This system is a surveillance radar based on prototypes for aircraft detection in Mexican airspace, which allows to obtain aircraft bearing, distance, and altitude. Unindetect representative projects developed with its own resources. Mexican Navy Autonomous Tactical Aerial Reconnaissance Patrol System, SPARTAM. The SPARTAM project was aimed at designing, developing, and integrating an unmanned aerial system, UAS, with the purpose of having an intelligence gathering system to strengthen intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities, and to support the operations of the Mexican Navy. The Sonar Training System, CESONAR. It is a simulator with the ability to instruct naval personnel in the handling of underwater detection technologies developed in UNINDETEC, such as CVISA, thus strengthening their skills on board surface unit. This project includes four systems, graphic and auditory training platform, laboratory scale linear zonar, acoustic signatures database, and mathematical models for sound propagation in water. This is how the Research and Technological Development Unit seeks to become a leader in the national scientific field, capable of reducing technological dependence from abroad and projecting the Secretariat of the Navy as a cutting-edge institution in the use of national technology with the sole objective of serving Mexico. Unindetec, science and technology to our homeland service. Well, continue with our presentation. We'll want to discover the topic of platform development by the institute that uh, will be to the UIS arena. That's why we need the UIS. Well, we have uh, our missions include ground operations, at sea operations, port administration, uh, assistance relief to uh, after a natural disaster. Uh, prevention of marine pollution and contention of that and marine life protections. So that's why we need UAS. Our development timeline include the, in 2012, we developed the BAN, the free UAS system that was named BAN. In 2018, we developed the second UAS system that was a project named SPARTA, that is unused today. And on the next year, we will finish development of the current project as a sand up. And by 2025, we would like to have our systems take off and land in front of ship at sea. Well, the band system was developed, finished in 2012. The key features of that system was manual takeoff and landing, autonomous flight. It was fully elect electric, 
80 minutes endurance, uh, 10 kilometers range, a thousand feet maximum sailing, he, and they have sensors, infrared and electro optical sensors. The technology that we developed in that time was we start to build our autopilot, we develop a grand station, the payload was a gimbal, the air, we developed the airframe, and we used data links like map links, avionics, we all did uh, PCBs and hardness. Yes. Okay, the next system was is the Spartan, the one that this was finished in 2018. The key features of that system it was gas propulsion, autonomous takeoff, flight and landing, 50 plus nautical miles of range, more than eight hours of endurance, 10,000 feet maximum ceiling, also has a EO or ER sensor. The technology we developed that was secondary flight computer. We use data links protocols, airframe, onboard subsystems. From avionics, we deal with PCBs and harness of the whole system. E um, um, and was fabricated and tested according to standards, the FAA and IEEE standards. Oh, we can see videos of the systems, autonomous flight, autonomous takeoff at sea level, landing at sea level, autonomous landing with uh, very large winds, and autonomous landing, 2,500 feet, meters. And this is what we're doing right now. It's, uh, the work is, for this system is in with support of Conacyt. The key factors of this system is hybrid technology, quad technology, B2 capabilities, gasoline, gas and electric propulsion models, autonomous takeoff and landing, uh, 50 plus nautical miles, more than eight hours of endurance, 10,000 feet maximum ceiling. The sensor is uh, electro-optical and infrared. The technology developed was the airframe, improved, improved fabrication techniques, onboard subsystem, the models for gasoline and electric propulsion, and some avionics. So this is an example of this uh, of the system. The, the one on the left is the, the older airframe that we've not been testing for. You can see the takeoff and the transition. And on the right side is a more like the system airframe, but it's uh, doing the same. Well, we are coming to our lessons there. The develop technology is not an easy task. We all know that. Um, most exists a learning cure, cure and continuous improvement. And new, new system bring new challenge. Uh, it's not that we take one system and make it bigger and it will work. That's not the case. Ideally, we have a TRL-9 system ready for naval operation at sea. 
but uh, we will share the uh, lessons that we're learning uh, through the time. We use simulation that provide us to, with this advantage of reduced damage in components and the overhaul system. Health double checking design calculations gives initial point of to start testing. So we we'll, we start to make our test hardness and everything we need to improve our, our concept or system. Uh, the simulation that we show here are flow analysis, user interfaces, and navigation and control simulation. Our testing procedures are developed, divided, divided in three systems, component testing, model testing, system testing. In component testing, the, we check for the operation of components as we expected. We measure the basic variables like voltage, communication protocols, etc. usually done at base test, extended time based on flight endurance, in model testing, well, we integrate the components, check interaction among those components, validation of uh, IO among components, uh, system testing, integration of models, check inter interaction among those models, fuel assembly as in flight condition, extended time testing based on flight endurance. So everything is needs to be checked out for the sufficient time that we are confident that will work by any operation of the airframe. Well, system testing we're doing three steps, lab testing, the software and hardware in the loop testing, uh, so low power of component, components, ideally for close proximity indoors, uh, those, the models are tested indoors, follow pre-flight and flight checklist. And we test the data links indoor as possible. In ramp testing with, with this uh, system full assembled, we test line of sight communications and SAT cones integration of iCraft and run stations, follow pre-flight and flight checklist, test part of navigation model, test propulsion models, and use better flight as possible. And in flight testing, we follow pre-flight and flight checklist, mission planning, test planning, ground testing. We have to be aware that most faults happen during this testing, even after hundreds or even thousands of hours of simulations, we validate and verification of, verificate uh, design parameters, gain tuning, that, that the models are working properly, flag envelope, and any uh, property that has emerged after we put all the models together. We expect to have a enormous difference in behavior between lab and real life testing. So if I wanna, okay, yeah. Let's have a enormous difference between behavior between lab and real life testing. Well, lab testing will result good, starting with control conditions. It's a good point for uh, think about what is going to occur with the airframe. Uh, usually just accounts for ground testing, except in some systems like Bicon. And real life testing, well, the disturbance in every variable, we validate and verif verify the system, we do data collection and analysis allows for full analysis variables, variables on the, of the system, accounts for variables not models in software and hardware in the loop. But you expect that your system will fly, you have to take it and go fly it. And if uh, there's no such place where you need to find a place that is more likely your system to operate to, to test in that area. 
always go full size. Just flying with a scale prototype will not work. The scale prototype is good for concept validation, for testing algorithms to just promote how the system will look like. The full size prototype for the same, but else accounts for difference in physical properties like weight and moment of inertia, structural rigidity, hardware, environmental effects, some properties that you get when you put all, all together and, uh, in an air, airframe of that size. Eventually, all faults in the system are addressed and solved. As an overdamped like behavior, the learning effort after that analysis moves fly in different scenarios. As approaches to zero confidence level increases, getting to zero may take years and a lot of effort. Usually leads to revise and improve the science. Expect to have crashes, but we have to minimize risk. Well, let's go to the future platforms. The world trend of development of UAEs, swarm and cooperative concept, solar power systems, bio-inspired UAVs, miniaturized UAVs, UAVs capable of navigate in geolocation denied spaces by use of tronics or inertial systems, and UAVs capable of onboard takeoff and landings. What do the Mexican Navy needs regarding UAS? Well, we need the chief on board takeoff and landing for sea operations. We need SATCOMs between aircraft and ground station to increase the range and go beyond line of sight. Derivation of current platform to get better range and endurance. Gas powered multicopters for close proximity, long endurance operations, use of various payloads. Our goal is to comply with many standards as possible, such as MIL, STD, Jeros, and Stagna. And we're trying to do our best in our unit. And we're, we're doing our, our best effort to, to get our, our products and our systems that uh, will fit the needs of our, of our Navy. And that's where we are today. With no further ado, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Admiral. It has been a quite impressive presentation. Personally, I knew you were doing all these developments, but I had no idea how advanced you are. So congratulations to, to you and all of the team in this amazing research institute. Now we have plenty of time for questions. I ask the public to send your questions to me in the chat in case you have any question or if you want to comment something. In our social networks, we don't have questions yet. Uh, and while we wait for the public to make a question. Oh, let me see. So there is a question from Christophe. He asks, do you envision hydrogen as fuel? Admiral, can you hear me? Yes, well, okay. we, we envision that, but the thing is, we are already don't have any any research research uh, line to, to try to accomplish that. But uh, but we think it's a good idea for this. Okay, so so what do you use right now for for the public to? to have a clear idea of what do you use as fuel?
we use uh, gasoline and for the next is batteries for the electric uh, metal capabilities. Great. Do you have any plans, future plans for the near future to use uh, solar panels? Like to get energy from small solar panels mounted on board the, the drones, of course. We, we don't have right now that, that plan, but it's, uh, it's a possibility and we need to explore it for smaller systems until we get enough energy to, to get our, our, our airframes you know, move it with the solar panels, so we'll, we'll do it if we, if we can. Excellent. So any more questions, please? Please send them to me uh, through the chat. And in the meantime, I, because now I have the opportunity to ask you directly, uh, I want to tell you that for, for this event, the original idea was to organize it last year in 2020. And usually this event has the conference part, but we also have competitions. We have indoor competitions and the outdoors competition. And for the IMAP 2020, we, we were planning to run the outdoor competitions and one of the challenges was uh, endurance. And the idea was to have, or to propose a, a UAV that could fly as long as possible, either using solar energy uh, or any other type of uh, battery that allowed the UAV to, to maintain flight. And of course, there were some ideas such as trying to take advantage of the wind. Um, so then in that case, you have to think of the design. The design had to be such in a way that allowed the drone to, uh, to use the, the wind current. So the goal of this challenge was to see who could develop a drone that not only depended, uh, depended on um, conventional fuel like gasoline or electric batteries, but try to use the wind, for instance, or solar power. But assuming that you had that type of technology, if you had that type of drone that could fly for, for many hours, and in your, in your presentation, you said that you have uh, a time of eight hours. So, could you tell us what could you do if you had a drone with long hours of flight? I know it might sound silly, but uh, to our uh, broader audience who are not that familiar with, with drones or UAVs that are deployed outdoors, what do you think are the applications for drones that could fly for longer hours? Well, the, the application for longer hours could be just to, uh, like we have a, a zones that uh, we have a mar marine protected spe species like the Vaquita Marina. In that area, that, uh, that uh, drone could fly long enough to make a full search of the area to keep the, uh, to make a, even you can make pictures to, to see the environment where the Vaquita Marina is living or even uh, protect uh, from, uh, from the people that are uh, fishing or, or doing not good things. That's what we can do. We can uh, put it uh, to make uh, an observation of this uh, of the coast for uh, hydrographic uh, research, to, or to just to, to make uh, broader areas to, to to check for vegetation, for uh, type of terrain, and those such stuff. Oh, we can do that. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral. We have a question from YouTube. Uh, Hector Manuel, he's asking, can IPN, IPN is, it stands for Instituto Politecno, Politecnico Nacional. It has a department of aeronautical engineering. So can the students of this department, can they collaborate with the research that you are carrying out in your institution? Yes, of course. We have uh, several interns from different uh, institutes, so they can came and we, there we have a procedure to uh, make uh, a procedure with the uh, Naval University that we accept those interns and they will do their um, their thesis or their uh, or the, their internship with us it's very very easy thank you so yes to to the students who are in the public who could be in the public please um get get in touch with uh with the people on the people in uh in, in this research institute i guess we can later on in the description of the videos on YouTube and Facebook, we could uh, provide details to contact the Admiral or uh, the corresponding personnel to find out about these internships or how to collaborate. Uh, if you're a student interested in this project, uh, you, you will find information there. Um, by the way, I uh, take the opportunity to say that if you go to the website, imap2021.inaweb.mx you will see at the bottom of the page you will see the social networks and in the social networks we have published the links uh, to the facebook live uh, session and also to the youtube channel where the video is being streamed online as well live so we have another question uh, from cesar martinez you are located on the coast and sometimes you have uh, windy conditions. Has your aircraft been designed taking this into account? Well, we designed uh, from the from the beginning, very beginning, we designed our air, air frames to support uh, 25 to 30 knots winds. That's the only thing we do. There's windy conditions always here, but uh, the design is for 25 to 30 knots wind. Right. Thank you. So uh, somebody from from the chat on YouTube, he, William, he's asking, will the presentation be available to watch later? Yes, of course, uh, because uh, this is an international event and the IMAP community is uh, spread abroad the globe. Uh, we have members from Australia, China, uh, of course, in Europe. So we, are, uh, we know that this might be not the best time for them to watch the the keynote and for that purpose we are going to stream again the the keynote in the afternoon uh, so we are going to do that uh, let me check that in the in the conference program you can see in the program overview that we are going to repeat uh, this keynote we're going to uh, transmit the video again at uh, it's going to be a replay at three o'clock in the afternoon today. So for those who didn't have the chance to watch the whole keynote, you can do it again in the afternoon at 3 p.m. I, I should say that all the times are in Mexico City time. And for those who might have a problem to find out what is the Mexican 
the Mexico City time. If you go to the website, imap2021.inaweb.mx, you will find uh, right at the beginning of the page, you will find a clock stating the, the date, for instance, today, November 17th, and the time. Okay, so let me ask you uh, another question, Admiral, because I noted that all your efforts are focusing on de developing uh, large aircrafts, um, but uh, what about micro aerial vehicles? Do you have any near uh, future plans to develop uh, small vehicles? I, I saw a picture of of this uh, uh, very very small uh, helicopter, uh, the Dragonfly, uh, if I remember correctly, or, or something like that. Uh, that was developed uh, in the UK, I think. Uh, so those type of uh, drones or tiny, tiny drones uh, have several purposes uh, or they are very useful for uh, perhaps some activities in the field. Uh, but do you have any plans on developing uh, that kind of uh, aerial vehicles, like micro or very tiny aerial vehicles? Yes, of course. I mean, there's a, a research uh, need for that, well, an operation need for that, because uh, for our missions that we have at the Mexican Navy, there's a need for mi micro aerial vehicles. Uh, we, we don't have right now one uh, line of investigation for that, but I can tell you that there are some places of, that are making uh, things with the uh, cameras and micro devices uh, to count people or areas mostly intended for areas uh, where a fire could come out and just you need to know how many people are in the area or things like that but uh, there's a need for that and i'm pretty sure that uh, we're going to have uh, that line of investigation uh, in the near time, in the near future. Great, thank you. Yeah, indeed, it's a very, it's, there is a great opportunity to, to develop this type of technology, especially here in Mexico. And, and that's, that is one of the reasons why uh, the IMAP community has been pushing for this type of conferences. Uh, because there are many challenges uh, behind developing micro aerial vehicles. And uh, this is one of the reasons why the conference also runs uh, competitions, because uh, we want to push for the, for the development of this type of technology. Um, so uh, another question uh, regarding aerial manipulation. Uh, I, I don't know whether you have done anything with uh, drones and robotic arms attached to the drones. Uh, as, as you know, there are many uh, proposals regarding, uh, for instance, drones uh, for uh, as firefighters, right? So you have a drone that drops water uh, onto a fire. Uh, you may also have drones trying to spray paint, right? Like to, to paint a building. Um, but we could also have drones with robotic arms to, to pick up stuff. Uh, I don't know, maybe there is something on the terrain that you are interested in picking up or grabbing, and you might want to use a drone for that. And I'm thinking of this because in your presentation, you talk about the hybrid drone that takes, it takes off vertically and then it can fly horizontally. Uh, so I am assuming that you can also land uh, in, in a vertical way. So if you have that capability, and on the top of that, if you had an, a robotic arm, perhaps you could do some uh, aerial manipulation. So could you share with us any ideas uh, on, on that matter? Do, do you have any plans regarding aerial manipulation? Please go ahead. No, we, we don't have a, uh, right now that uh, line of investigation because our, our drone usually uh, 
for our missions right now. They're going to fly, they're going to do a, a surveillance of our area, and don't, it's, they're not intended to go on one place and do some manipulation with that arm. But we also need to check for uh, the, the airframe uh, movements with, that, with an arm, which is going to impact our airframe and our, uh, the fluid of the air through the airframe is going to change. So we need to check for, for that. I mean, if we were operating in a sea environment, um, uh, if uh, we don't have, uh, we have some problems with the drone or something, uh, the drone has to land somewhere. And if there's only sea, well, we lose the drone. That's not, uh, so we need to be very sure about what we put the drone on, what don't. Definitely. Yeah, uh, the payload is, is very important. And then any extra motion on top of the drone might bring uh, pertur perturbations, of course. Um, great. Thank you, Admiral. So we have uh, another question from the YouTube channel from Hector Manuel. Uh, how can we use drones that move and communicate in swarm with AI? I guess, artificial intelligence. So uh, I guess the question is whether you have any ideas on how to use, uh, first of all, whether you are working on swarms, um, what are the challenges with communication for, for swarms? Especially if you deploy them in the sea, I guess. Well, right now we 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 su can support uh, swarms. It depends on the mission of the the drones. But uh, right now, I, I can tell you, we we haven't used it right now. But we can support it in a if we need it. If the the mission needed, but we can put everything and we can modify things so we can use. It. Okay, great. And a final question um, from Fermi Guerrero. Thank you very much for your presentation. Two questions. First, do you design the autopilots and control algorithms for your UAVs? Please, please Admiral. We, we have both. I mean, we started, as uh, said in the presentation, the first band that we used in 2012, we started to develop our autopilot, but we also buy autopilot, so we use both. We have both uh, systems. Okay. And the second question is, what kind of control approaches do you use? I guess this is more like a technical question. We use PID with the reference models for that. For that. That's the way. Okay, great. Right, it has been uh, a pleasure to hear your keynote, uh, Admiral. I am, uh, once more, I have to say it, and I am very impressed. I'm pretty sure the, the public uh, is also quite impressed. Uh, sometimes we don't, we really don't know uh, what is being developed in our country. And I'm, I'm very proud to see uh, that a Mexican institution is actually working on this type of technology and that actually you, are, you, you have these uh, vehicles um, that to me, I think they are quite impressive. Uh, uh, as, as a researcher, I am aware that it is very challenging and you said it actually, uh, you can build prototypes and, and deploy them in control uh, scenarios, but uh, when it comes to reality, it is very hard and very challenging. And for all what we saw in your presentation, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed and I congratulate you and your team. And, and of course, 
we are very, very honored to, to have you here. And I'm pretty sure that the public has also enjoyed your presentation. And we will play, the, play it again in the afternoon at 3 p.m. So please, to all the people who are just joining the presentation, we will play again uh, the Admiral's keynote presentation in the afternoon. You can go to the social networks uh, you know, on Facebook and, and Twitter. And, on YouTube, you will find the links uh, on the website, the official website, the imap2021.inaweb.mx. And after having said all of that, uh, thank you very much, Admiral. We will uh, send you your certificate of participation. And if you have a last message, please, uh, please work it. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Granz, and I, I will add something that we have, uh, our, our team has uh, 10 years to, uh, working with drones, a little bit more than 10 years working with drones, and every day we learn something new, and, and every day we improve something, so as we keep improving uh, uh, our drones, or the, the team keeps working like, the, like it's working right now, uh, everything's going to be better, so... Thank you for your this opportunity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Admiral. And, and with that, uh, we think.